on this episode, We Make Burgers. Stick around. Hey everyone, it's Dave from Dave's Ohio Barbecue, introducing a new segment on the uh, channel today. It's called Dave's Grilling Basics. We've all been to that backyard barbecue. We've all been to that cookout where the chef has just destroyed a piece of meat. In my case, it's my father-in-law. Sorry, Alan, you know it's true. These videos are gonna be aimed at those guys and anyone else who wants to get perfect results and rave reviews from their guests. Or maybe you just bought your first grill and you need to learn a surefire way to make perfect recipes. I'm gonna be making these recipes on a gas grill. I know, I know, the purists are saying that charcoal is far better. They're right. But the truth is, the vast majority of people that grill have gas grills. Um, and any one of these recipes could easily be done on a charcoal grill. Same process. The first thing you need to get right is the meat. In a perfect world, we would all grind our own meat. That's not going to happen. Just look for fresh, quality ground beef. Try to get 80-20. That's 80% meat to 20% fat. Uh, that much fat keeps the burgers really juicy. And let's be honest, fat is where all the flavor is. So how big should you make the burgers? Well, I usually go in about five to six ounce range. That's a really good size for most people. Um, when I form them, I've got this handy dandy little hamburger press, but you can use your hands to try to make them all uniform thickness. Or if you have like a large lid from maybe like a big pickle jar or from a big mayonnaise jar, something like that, you can put some saran wrap in there, press the meat down in there lightly um, to form the burger. You really don't want to pack the meat in too tight. You want a, a nice loose pack. That way the burgers cook up a little better and the juice has uh, room to move around inside the burger. The only ingredients for these burgers are beef, salt, and pepper. Because I am a firm believer that your beef should taste like beef. A pinch of salt on each side and a couple grinds of pepper. I do this to the burgers about an hour before I cook them. This gives the meat time to absorb some of the salt. I know some people like to take the beef and add like raw eggs and, and breadcrumbs to it. That's not a burger. That's a meatball. I'm talking to you, Dad. Or even douse the raw meat with like teriyaki sauce or even hoisin sauce. I'm looking at you, Sinagra. If you want to add that stuff after the burger is cooked, so be it. The easiest way to check the temperature of your grill is to hold your hand about three inches over the grate. If you can't hold it there for longer than three seconds, you're ready. Now, how long do you cook the burgers? My guide is four minutes, flip, then four minutes more. Add cheese when there's about one minute left. Just make sure it's something that melts. Cheddar, Colby, American, Swiss. Don't go chucking a brick of feta on there. It's not gonna melt. Two things you don't wanna do with your burger. Do not press your burger into the grill grate with the spatula or the flipper, or whatever you wanna call it. Think of the burger like a sponge. Every time you do that, you're squeezing out all the liquid. Also, do not cut into the burger to see if it's done. So then how do you tell if the burger is done? When I use the four minute flip, four minute method on my burgers, on my grill, it gets me a perfect medium burger. If you like your burgers a bit more rare, then cook them for less time. Maybe three minutes, flip three minutes. If you want them well done, well done is disgusting and I will not condone that behavior on my channel. Easy way to check if your burger is done is to kind of lightly press in the middle of it. If it's really gushy, then it's still raw. But if it's kind of firm and has a little bit of a give, you're approaching that sort of medium area right there. If it's stiff, you screwed up and you need to start over. Um, a good way to compare is take the space in between your thumb and your index finger and kind of squeeze it. That's sort of the feel you're going for. That's not kind of feel that kind of squishes but then bounces back. If you need to take a temperature, do it. Here's a chart for doneness temps. Just remember the temperature of beef rises a bit once you take it off the grill. So maybe pull the burgers when they're five degrees below your desired temperature. Make sure you let the burgers rest at least five minutes before serving them. When it comes to assembling the burger, I like the traditional way. I start with a squishy white bread bun, then I add some crunch, onion, tomato, pickles, whatever you or your guest want. And that's it. Perfect burgers that everyone will love. Please be sure to leave a comment below. Make sure you follow me on social media. And make sure you hit that subscribe button because I've got more recipes coming real soon. Thanks for watching.